Hello and welcome to the video. This is an overlook and review of this thing here. Now, for those of you that watch the channel regularly, this will feel like deja vu because we've seen something very similar to this before. In fact, it was before Christmas back in December. This is the Aquilia 20. Still not completely sure that's the way you say it from Beta FPV. Now I did a review of the Analog One and really liked it. It is absolutely aimed at those of you that are new to this stuff and it's not really designed for anything apart from, you know, kind of learning to fly. It's designed to be super easy to fly about, super stable in the hover. You can absolutely fly it outside, but because of its design, you can hover it in the dining room and get your practice in. Now, I was aware when I did that analog review in December that this was coming. And this came out uh, middle of December, actually. And the reason that I've waited to kind of do my video on it was for a couple of reasons, really. First of all is that, as usual, we get shipped these things for review. There's a mad rush on the day of release for everyone to put them out and put the videos out. And it's like, you know, you get six videos on exactly the same subject on the same day. I didn't think me doing a video would add anything in that particular situation. I wanted to be able to fly it for three or four weeks before I made my video. Why? Well, the big deal with this, of course, and I talked about this uh, just before Christmas, actually, is that this has the HD system inside called ArtLink, which is something that I personally haven't flown before. And that means that the goggles in the all-in-one kit have been upgraded and the little quad has as well. So this is ArtLink, it's 1080p, 60 frames a second, full HD in an all-in-one package, again, priced incredibly aggressively. So now I've had it long enough and really flown it about to actually have some real world experience, I thought I would make a video and kind of share my thoughts. So the bullet points for this are pretty much the same as the Aquila 20 analog kit. It's everything you need in one box. It's the HD goggles, the drone, the remote control, the batteries, the charger, and everything else. And the P1 HD VTX that's inside this delivers 1080p at 60 frames a second. Latency is about 60 milliseconds, which is, those of you that like to fly incredibly quickly close to things might seem a lot, but actually for general pilots and people learning to fly, that's going to be absolutely fine. They're advertising a range of about 400 meters. Some people are getting far further than that. However, I'll talk a little bit more about how the HD FPV system performs in a moment. It is a 2S quad and it is designed to be very accessible for new pilots. So although you can kind of turn it into manual mode and have it flying a lot faster, by default, the default settings on this thing mean that it is a very, very forgiving, gentle flyer that is perfect for flying indoors in larger areas, but does mean that when you're ready, you can go outside and fly it around without any problem. 10 minute flight time on this, thanks to the batteries that you get with it. You can record via the DVR in the goggles, as you would expect. And it does seem to survive crashes and bumps pretty well, which it's got to if it's designed at those of, that are coming into the hobby who are quite new, because crashing is part of the learning process. The thoughts on the quad, well, we'll have a closer look at each individual piece in a moment, but Again, this, like its analog sister, is a very professional looking quad, very consumer looking though. Again, it's set up super easy to fly. No external ports to get into the settings. I'll talk about that a little bit more at the end. Uh, custom batteries are not my favorite thing. You're stuck with the vendor's kit, however, they're not particularly expensive. And about 10 minutes of flight time from the supplied batteries is gonna be easily enough to get you into trouble or for your brain to be fried if you're learning to fly and it's time to land it and take a moment to gather yourself. No beeper again, sadly, that would have been nice for when it does get lost in grass, you'd be able to find the thing. So let's go through what you actually get in the kit. And again, for those of you that watched my review of the Aquilia 20 analog version, this is going to look very similar. The big differences are going to be the system in the quad and the changes to the goggles. Uh, the actual radio itself is the same radio. Uh, these are these kind of gamer style, press and hold the button to kind of turn it on. You get a little indication lights, press and hold the button to turn it off. Has a little USB connection at the bottom with bind buttons and other bits and pieces. Express RS inside. Very simple switch setup. 
We have two three position switches, a couple of rockers and a couple of moment trees. The way it's set up is that this is arming and these two will kind of give you the modes and the speeds. And then I think that is the return to uh, flip over if you crash and it's upside down. That's it really, internal battery. So you're gonna make sure you charge it before you take it to the field. Um, in use, this is absolutely fine. The, the sticks are height adjustable, uh, but if you're used to holding any kind of game controllers, this is gonna feel incredibly intuitive. And I guess for somebody like a new pilot that is coming to it, um, the more chance of that kind of experience in the box of your radio. So that's those. Next thing then is the goggles. The goggles are a little bit different from the ones that are in the analog system. Uh, the big thing is, is inside here are actually two 18650s. They were supplied with a kit and to power it on, same deal, you press and hold it. Pressing it briefly will give you the power level. There's a USB-C charging port at the side. I do like the fact that it has 18650s in here. They can be a bit hard to get to, uh, but it means that you can change them out at the field. So if you're having a day's flying and the batteries are getting low, it's no big deal to change them. There's a flying lead that goes down the side here of the goggle strap and goes into the side. So that's what that additional power thing is. Uh, the other goggles, the analog ones, uh, had this same port, but it didn't really get used for anything. The other thing you'll spot, of course, is that there are now two antennas on this particular kit. So uh, rather than the one for the analog, we have two ears rather than the one. There is a USB-C port at the side. Then we have the same controls here for back, record, the joystick for the uh, menu that you have inside. A little SD card that goes here at the top and that can be used to record onto. And um, actually they fit pretty well. This one, it uh, does have the overhead strap, which isn't removable. It's kind of sewn into the battery pack. So you do look a little bit special wearing it, but um, actually it does kind of keep the weight off your face. Fit on these goggles, just like with the original analog ones, is okay. It's nothing really to write home about. They've obviously done quite a bit of work here with this stuff to try and make it so that there's no light leaks. Um, it took a little while when I first took mine out in the unboxing you might notice that these were all pushed up just the way they were they very quickly dropped back into position and it does a pretty reasonable job of stopping light leaks just be aware there may be a covering film on the lenses here but it's very easy to see what's going on so those are the goggles last thing then is obviously the quad the quad, if you saw it side by side with the analog one, you know what, you think it was exactly the same model because it looks and flies in exactly the same way. The batteries are the same, um, the way it all attaches, all the connections are the same. So you know what, it, it kind of looks, feels and smells like the analog version. So standard stuff, you plug the battery in to kind of um, connect it, to turn it on, you press the battery once and then press and hold it and that will power everything up. But obviously it's the ArtLink system in here, which is that new HD piece. Um, so, you know, it, in terms of the kit, again, it's a really nice all-in-one kit that gives you everything you need to be flying. But obviously the big difference with this over the analog version is this, you get 1080p HD FPV. So what's it like to fly? Well, it's exactly the same in terms of the base flying experience as the analog version. It is very easy to fly, inspires tons of confidence, and by default, there are lots of aids turned on. It'll just sit and hover in the air. You can kind of take your hands off the sticks and it'll just sit there. So if you get into trouble, it won't immediately smash and crash into something and destroy it and whatever it hits. Talking a little bit more about about the HD FPV system. Uh, the images that I'm showing here are all from the DVR. Um, this picture is actually really good. Um, there's a little bit of smearing, a little bit of muddying of the grass and fine detail when moving at speed. But I found the breakup very impressive. I was actually flying behind trees in um, areas that I didn't realize was, I was behind the tree because I didn't experience much breakup at all. It was only when I came back, my kind of spotter was going, oh, you got quite far behind those trees there, look. So 
it is very resilient the penetration and the ability to maintain the video uh, when it's slightly more challenging conditions is pretty good range is easily enough for a hobby grade flyer uh, 400 meters is going to be edge of line of sight with this thing which let's be honest is the legal in most places and at 400 meters this thing is going to be a dot and the dvr is a bit of a strange one uh, it works on my pc as you can see i can render it into videos however some of the preview stuff in some of the video editors i'm playing with here shows it as a black file but it does still play okay um, so just be aware of that it does seem to work fine and play okay but maybe the encoding is a little bit non-standard in the goggles as they are here Quick comment on the goggles themselves. I used the Beta FPV goggles that came with the kits um, on the analog version and also this. I think they have quite a bit of light leakage. They don't fit particularly well is my only criticism with this. It would be great if Beta FPV brought out different foam that was more designed for Western faces that had kind of better recesses around things like the nose and other pieces in a way that fitted a little bit easier. Some of my friends really like the fit. For me, it almost feels like it's drooping down on my face to the point where I can actually get it so there's minimal light leak. You can also use reading glasses with this stuff. So if you are a glasses wearer, then these will go over the top, which for those of you that do wear spectacles, I'm sure will be great news. So as I mentioned in the introduction, this is a quad that's really designed for beginners. Uh, however, the fact that Beta FPV have also released the goggles separately and the airside unit, the VTX units for the R-Link system separately, mean that you could absolutely start with this then as you wanted to expand the hobby, if you got bitten by the bug, then you could get additional airside units, put them in other quads, boats, cars, planes, wings, whatever it is you want, and continue to use these pieces. Similar to what Cadix and Walksnail have done with things like the Protoss All-in-One, their other HD cheap system that we're gonna be playing with a lot, I expect, in 2026. Again, there are a couple of things on here that I'm not a big fan of. I don't like the proprietary batteries typically. However, they are not expensive. So thank you, Beta FPV, for not ripping us off for that. That's great. Uh, the fact that you can't get in and change the settings, understand why, but for more experienced pilots like me, I want to go in and tweak stuff like the on-screen display layout. But you know what? I'm really not who this is aimed at. This is aimed at those of you that might have been watching videos for ages, interested in getting in the hobby, not bothered about walk snail, but want to try HDFPV, get everything in one box. This has everything you need. The charger's in there, the batteries are in there, the quad, the goggles, everything else. All you need to do is add an SD card, pop those in the goggles, and then start your practicing. With the way that this thing flies and the way it's all set up, they did a fantastic job with the analog version. This new HD system, the ArtLink system that's in here, just takes it to a whole nother level. It's wonderful that in the hobby, we now have these options and choices of different HD systems that we can buy that aren't gonna cost us an arm and a leg. So if you have any questions, please pop them down below. I'm going to be keeping this kit to the side of me and maybe buy another VTX or two and try them out of the field. But uh, yeah, Beta FPV are definitely stepping up and going from a manufacturer of very little quads and bits and pieces into quite a serious contender of making all-in-one systems, particularly around HD. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.